Hello, dear friends. So the question uh, has to do with how do we recognize a, uh, the Plum Village tradition? How do we know that uh, the practices that we are involved in or observing or reading about are actually authentic Plum Village uh, practices? The first way we know it is with the first, what we call the Dharma seal, the first Dharma seal of Plum Village, which is I have arrived, I am home. Now what does that mean? I have arrived, I am home. It means I have come back to myself, to this present moment. So the Plum Village practice, the foundational practice, is coming to the breath and the body. When we bring the breath and the body together, we can know that we are truly alive. We are truly present in this moment. We can know what is going on in the body. We can know what is going on in the mind, in our thoughts. Uh, we can know what's going on around us. And we can respond appropriately. So very, very essential to come back to the present moment. I have arrived. I've come home. I've come home to this moment, the only moment that we really have. You know, so, so often we have the habit energy the mind, the conditioned mind, is running into the future or running into the past. Regretting the past, feeling sorrowful, sad about something that happened yesterday or 25 years ago, or we're caught in worries about the future. And in those moments where we're caught in the past or caught in the future, we're not truly alive. We're not truly alive. We're on autopilot. We're being pushed by the energies of the ancestors so that the, the, our response to whatever is happening may not be coming from our own truth. It might be coming from the truth of grandmother, of great-grandmother, of the larger community around us. Uh, and so we work really hard. We have many wonderful uh, uh, techniques to support us to come back to this present moment, to arrive in each moment, to arrive at home. And one way we do that is uh, mindful walking. So when we walk, we know that we're walking. And when we sit, and this is straight from the Buddha actually, when we sit, we know that we're sitting. And when we're eating, we know that we're eating. Mm -hmm. So we're practicing being in the present moment as we walk, we know that we're in touch with the breath. We're in touch with the feet as they touch the earth. Uh, as we eat, we're in touch with the food and with the breath and the body. We take time. We slow down. We reflect on the food that's in front of us. We're in that present moment. We're fully alive. And that's why the food tastes so good. Very often at our retreats, People will say, mmm, this food is so delicious. What's different about it? What's different is that the people are practicing. They're practicing being present for the food. They're not caught in thoughts about the past or the future. They're very much in the present moment. They've arrived home. So that is a very foundational practice. And we, we do our best to practice that throughout the day. So Plum Village is not, we, we don't really focus on sitting for long periods of time. We usually sit for perhaps 30 or 40 minutes in the morning and 30 or 40 minutes in the evening. And then we might have some chanting in the morning or chanting in the evening or reading a discourse from the Buddha. Um, <clears throat> or we might practice singing some songs together. But we're present. So we're practicing always to be in the present moment, to have arrived home in this present moment. So it's not, uh, you know, I, I think many traditions really focus on sitting, formal sitting meditation. We do some of that, but not much, because we're trying to do that all day long in everything that we do. When we have a conversation with our friends, uh, when we speak to someone on the path, we make the eye contact perhaps, and we're present. So we're always trying to be in touch with the breath. I've heard our teacher, Tai, 
Thich Nhat Hanh say that he spent more than 10 days in New York City, walking through the streets of New York City, going through the big train station, getting on the subway. He said he never lost touch with his breath one time. So always in touch with the breath and the body. That is what it means to arrive home. The second Dharma seal is to go as a river. So now what do we mean about that? by that? We mean <clears throat> community. So the meta, it's a metaphor to go as a river. So we recognize that if we try to go through our life, uh, using again the metaphor as a drop of water, we won't last long. We'll never make it to the ocean. We'll evaporate. We lose our energy. We need the support of one another. Mm -hmm. So when we go as a river, we're many drops of water. We come together, and that river, while it, it, it might lose its way a little bit here and there, depending on how mindful the, the Sangha is, the practitioners are, but we will get to the ocean. And of course, where, what is the ocean but the, the ultimate uh, nirvana, happiness, yeah, peace. That's the direction we're walking in, right? So Plum Village is extremely um, mm -hmm. committed to, dedicated to community building because we recognize that none of us is really separate from others. Each of us has everything else in us, so we very much have the teaching of the, the, the phrase or the word that our teacher coined, interbeing, we enter are. I am made of everything, everything in the cosmos, really, and so are you. So you are me and I am you. We aren't simply connected. We are actually one. Although in this conventional uh, world that we live in, this reality, we appear to be, what, eight billion people on the planet? I don't know how many are here now, but we appear to be many, many separate beings. Ah, but no. Not only are we not separate from our human family, we're not separate from all other forms of life, including minerals, including plants, including all, all forms of life, insects, animals. They're all part of us because they are, they are our ancestors, and we have those ancestors in us, in every cell of the body, in the DNA of our body. So that is why it's so important to come home and be here. Yeah and then to practice together, to support one another. So again, we have practices for that. The primary one that I think maybe distinguishes Plum Village, it's the, I've practiced in other traditions and I've never experienced this particular one anywhere except in Plum Village a, as a Buddhist practice. And that is we sit in circles and we have something called Dharma sharing. Dharma sharing. It used to be called Dharma discussion, but I notice we've gotten away from that word, perhaps because it encourages us to have more of an intellectual conversation that we're all so accustomed to having in daily life. But when we have Dharma sharing, we're sharing from the heart. So we sit in a circle. We sit in a circle and we practice deep listening. We practice listening to each other and to ourselves. So I listen to my body as I listen to you talk. I'm also listening for any sensation that comes up in the body, a thought that comes up, and I just notice that, and then I come back to my breath. I'm practicing being fully present for the speaker and for the friends sitting in the circle. We do that without judgment. It's so freeing to sit in a circle like that and to realize I don't have to decide that, I don't have to put a label on that person who's speaking. I don't have to decide that she is speaking truth or not truth. I don't have to judge her at all. Because of course that's part of, our, of everyone's practice, right? No matter what your tradition, we don't really want to be judging people, putting people in a box, putting, them in a, putting a label on them and saying she's like that and he's like that and I don't like this and I do like that. We do so much of that in daily life. But in, uh, when we're practicing and when we find this path, 
we begin to find another way of being that is so much more freeing so that I can be myself and you can be yourself. So when I sit in that Dharma sharing circle, we all are given the guidelines, no matter how, no matter how strong the practitioners who are sitting in the group, we still remind ourselves by going through the guidelines. And one is, <clears throat> we're not here to solve anyone's problem. I don't have to, I don't have to try to decide anything for you. I just listen to you. And already we, we know that just by being heard, by someone truly giving us their, the, their loving, non-judgmental presence, that is already so healing, so healing. Someone is really hearing me. They might even be understanding me. How precious is that? Hmm. Another guideline for sitting in that Dharma sharing uh, circle, we don't interrupt one another. We just listen. So we have a way, we say, we bow in, and that is the signal to the group that I have something I'd like to share. And then everyone else bows to say, we're here for you. We're here for you. And so then the speaker speaks. And the speaker has the floor until he or she bows out. Because sometimes people speak more slowly or they hesitate and are pondering something. And then it, the habit energy is for someone else to think, Oh, she's finished talking, so now I'll jump in and say something. And uh, so this is how we avoid that. I've shared many times that in my uh, daily life, before I found this practice, I was, hmm, I was very, 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 um, hmm, I had the strong habit energy of interrupting. I thought I was just being enthusiastic. So you would be telling about an experience you would have, and I'd say, yes, you know, I get it. I've been there. I've done that too. And so what happened in that moment? She, her story is lost and now the light is on me. And people turn to listen to me. I have taken it from her. So it's a, a, a kind of way of not having reverence for life because I have, I have in, a, in a sense, I've, I've killed her joy in that moment. And I did that for so many years. And other people around me were doing it too, of course. We were supporting one another to do that. We just were ignorant. We didn't know. The conditions had not manifested yet. For In my case, and I think it's true for everyone, at some point, if we are very fortunate, the conditions manifest that we find a teacher, we find teachings, we find practices to support us, we find a spiritual family. And that's what I have in Plum Village. Uh, I have a spiritual family. And that was something that I didn't even know I was looking for. I didn't realize I was missing it until I found it. And when I found it, it was the happiest week of my life. My first retreat with Plum Village and Thich Nhat Hanh and the monks and nuns of Plum Village and the lay people who were already practicing. So, yeah, so Sangha building, community building. It's an extremely, extremely important, purposeful work, uh, I feel, uh, in these times in particular, but probably in all times throughout history. We each need a place where we can take refuge. And I take refuge in my spiritual family. Uh, yes, I take refuge in the books, the teachings, the Dharma talks, the podcasts, the videos. I take refuge in those. But for me, it's essential, and I do this every year. I go on at least one or two retreats. I try to be with other practitioners uh, so that we can practice together, and it's just a most joyful time. Sometimes uh, suffering comes up, and I welcome that, especially in that environment, because I know that I'm surrounded by good spiritual friends who all are well-intentioned. There's nothing to fear. And as our teacher says, once we've found the path, there is nothing else to fear. We have a path. And for me, the path has become uh, Buddhism. I was uh, born and raised in a Christian tradition. And um, I can't say that I've left that. That's part of me, just like, that, uh, just like the child who's still inside of me, the inner child, she's still part of me too. The five-year-old that uh, little Trish was, still a part of me. The Christian who practiced Christianity for so many years, still a part of me. 
I haven't thrown anything away. I just seem to be becoming more of who I am. And I think that is perhaps what we're all trying to do, is walk in that direction of wholeness and becoming uh, the, 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 becoming the person we really are, the human being that, that we know ourselves to be, but somehow perhaps got covered up with, with conditioning of society and the family issues and uh, the learning that, that uh, we had no control over, particularly when we were young. So I, uh, I encourage you to, um, to learn more about Plum Village, um, as we in Plum Village like to learn more about um, other traditions.